Hi, so we have here the Lost Battalion, the Meuse Argonne campaign uh, 1918. Um, and the intention is to film a turn. We're on the fourth game turn out of 18, uh, more or less in real time, so you can see how the game plays out. Now, it's, this is the second um, game I played. The first game, I was having problems with my equipment and so didn't manage to get anything recorded well but that was just as well because it it, it um I made some mistakes and uh, I sort of called the game on the 13th turn because um uh, the Americans had not got much further than you see here on the fourth turn so I learned some lessons in that and how to, uh, to organize the American initial attack and uh, also Part of the problem was, is that there's certain timed things that happen. There's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, and there might be a couple more. Um, things that happened on different turns, like on the second turn, the Americans get their headquarters reserves, and the um, Germans uh, have their barrage markers, they get artillery in play, and they also get two gas attacks. But then on the sixth turn, you have to remove one gas attack. On the eighth turn, you remove one barrage and the other gas attack. And I didn't have, I, I forgot that because it's not marked anywhere on the game board. It's marked in the uh, setup and reinforcement schedule. Now, at the back of the rules, now because the setup is also marked on the board and very clearly marked on the board and well displayed, I didn't feel the need to check the reinforcement um, and setup. So after the setup, I didn't need to check. Feel the need to check the reinforcement schedule because um yeah so the reinforcements are marked on the counter so it says the turn and which side of the board it comes on that's all you need to know so I didn't feel the need to reference that table which is um is just a long list and there's not nothing sort of in it really to say notice this is not reinforcements but this is um when you take gas markers off and so forth so I hadn't. T taking cognizance of that completely and therefore missed it so that's you know just one of those things that it would have been handy to have to mark those or at least star them on the turn track on the map so you've got it in front of you as you play and you don't have to at the end of every turn look at the back of the rules and check down find out you know run through lists see what's going on um so I've been through that, I've marked it on the, the turn track myself, and now I'm on the second game. So what happens is that at the top of the turn there's a mutual reinforcement and replacement phase. So um, the American has brought on reinforcements, um, the uh, German places their turn reinforcements. So I have, um, as the Germans, we have three regiments coming on in the east. So they can come on anyway, you just place them down to remind yourself, but you only move them on during your turn. So that's anywhere along the east except uh, past the uh, American start line. Um, then the um, German gets to place their two gas attacks. So every turn until they get removed, you can place the gas attacks. And effectively what you do is it has to be adjacent to one of your units, and you place it immediately, the American loses a step, uh, in that and then they cannot attack or move into but well, they can move out of that hex so, so they, sorry they cannot attack from or move into that hex so that is an extremely effective way of blunting uh, the major american thrusts then the german rolls for a 2d6 and they, they get that many machine gun markers these are great for if you have gaps in the line you can you know, for example, this, especially later on, you, you don't have enough units perhaps to hold the full line. So then you just plonk um, machine gun units down at the beginning of, of the turn when you see what gaps you have. It's all, also, you can add two per hex, can st stack two per hex with whatever's underneath. So you can also bolster where you think other main thrusts are going to be. Um, they... Now that's diminishing returns, so from turn four onwards, so like from this turn, I had to subtract two from the dice roll, that goes all the way down to minus six at turn 14, so you get diminishing returns on all your uh, German assets. 
Um, and then the replacements. Now replacements happen. The American, in, during their t previous turn, they can just just simply remove as long as you have a, like a supply line back to your um, your off the, the the map edge, which is in the south for the Americans here. Um, you just immediately take off all four regiments from a division, and it has to be all four re regiments. If a division has lost a single regiment at all completely, now each unit is four steps. Each regiment is four steps for the Americans, two for all other nationalities. Like here we have Austrians, Germans, and we have French on the Allied side. Now, um, so if you haven't lost a single regiment, you can take your division off. The American puts it in their headquarters reserve and then at the top of the next turn they can add replacements. The American has 50 for the whole game. I've just added um, four to um, a division there. So And then later on that can come in as a reserve in this reinforcement replacement segment. Um, so essentially, particularly for the American, you have to be cycling divisions out as they get depleted. You take them out, re add replacements, and then cycle them back into the game as reinforcements after that. It's a very important factor, um, mainly because in the combat results table, each side will always take at least one loss. So you always cause at least one loss to the enemy, one step loss, but you will always take at least one step loss every combat you do. That is a given. And that is th this... That point and the recycling of the replacements and then these um, decisions of the assets is essentially the core of this game because um, you know you have a not a static front line because it is moving but you, you have a, essentially a more or less continuous front line continuous front and um, so you know that's kind of moving forward you don't have great thrusts and envelopments and circlements so your decisions are on about who to pull out which sector of to, to add replacements to and so forth like that where's your main thrust this turn going to be etc um okay so that's what we do in this phase and then finally the american or the allied i should say player turns over um all the artillery markers which had fired now these ones back here that you can see are all artillery. I've got one moved up further here. You don't want your artillery too close to the front because the German can potentially spot them two hexes away and they could bring an artillery barrage down upon them. And uh, each artillery unit is only one step. Uh, I lost two artillery units uh, very early on, actually in, in leaving a gap in my front line. And the German just sending a sacrificial unit, essentially sacrificial, to destroy... Um, two artillery units, um, one through a gas attack, uh, uh, very costly because you need these artillery units. Um, the potential for them is that uh, you'll see it when we get to the combat sequence, but essentially the uh, you can send in a barrage before your guys go in. So if your barrage actually eliminates the unit, you you can move into its hex, but you will not take that step loss because the artillery has done most of the job for you um so uh and that is the uh, mutual reinforcement and replacement phase then we move on to the player turn now this game plays very quickly because you only have um three main parts to it that phase the american player turn a german player turn and in each turn you just have a movement and then a combat phase and then the american has artillery movement phase any artillery which don't fire can move up um, and that's it so and um, it happens not nice and quickly um, but it is 18 turns long so um, you know that has a time factor in it so we're in the American player turn um, you've got sort of a broad view of it I might zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on but first essentially what I do is look there's a gap here the Americans retreated into the Argonne forest here to, um, let's zoom in on that. Okay. Uh, should we go even closer? Okay, it's a bit 
Let's see, where's the tap? Okay, I think that helps a little. So the Germans move back, they get, um, they moved out of their trench line. Um, they were holding here. No, in fact, they were here. Um, they'd originally been holding here. This is, if you can see a slight yellow line, this is the um, American start line. So um, they moved back because of impressment here. They didn't want an encirclement and cutting off. So, but they can take advantage. They don't have trenches here, but they do have the advantage of heavy forest as compared to, for example, this hex is just light woods. These are lighter woods. This is heavy forest. Um, uh, so the American is going to move forward. Now in the first turn, one thing you, you, d you haven't seen is that the first turn of the game, you get what the American gets what are called hasty attacks. And essentially that is you can attack in the um, movement phase. So you would pay double the terrain cost to move into there. Now that's one movement point there. This heavy forests cost three movement points. Normally it's like two for um, uh, forest or, or trenches. Um, so that's a heavier. So that would be six movement points to cause an attack into there. But you can see when we were back here on the start line, um, we paid four movement points to attack into there. And normally you get like 10 movement points to start with. So you could actually do two attacks. If the first one only takes a step, second one took another step, and then you would be in. And uh, what that meant was that then other American units that hadn't moved could move through that. And we had a couple of sort of small encirclements, but mostly like these heavy thrusts forward. Um, so that is how uh, the initial breakthrough occurred. That is how the Americans could sort of move off from their start line. But now um, that's only on the first turn. So since then, attacks only occur um, after movement. And so um, originally you c each stack can attack separately. But now, obviously, um, these three stacks, as per normal sort of combat, war games they can all gang up and attack here you have no zones of control in this game so there's no sense of he has to attack here he has to attack here you don't have to do soak off attacks like that we can just say okay these are all concentrating on this fellow but then obviously you can take that hex that's it end of your game turn then the journal gets to move so you don't get huge breakthroughs now from the 13th turn onwards the uh, American can start preparing what's called the final assault. So he, he, it would take three um, turns and he can, any number of um, divisions that he has taken out and put in the General Headquarters Reserve, it, it, they have to take three turns to build up. You mark them with an assault marker from then on and at any point they can do these hasty attacks movement during combat. And essentially that will give you another sort of last minute lunge before the uh, um, campaign is exhausted. And um, that is going to be very useful. For example, over here, that, that you see this sec. this is the Meuse River and this sector um, is the American due to like planning constraints and so forth. They're not, they cannot attack after until turn five or after on that side of the river. But there's two um, victory points. The German, the American only needs three victory points for a minor victory. And I think it's five for a s decent victory and uh, seven for, you know, like a triumphant victory, something like that. But two, that will get them two victory points immediately. So... Um, they would just need one more, for example, this fellow. Um, but they'd have to get to that fellow following the, this side of the muse, which is going to be hard until, again, another time thing, turn 14, then the Americans can, can cross the muse. They had trouble with bridging and the Germans destroying all the bridges. The Americans just didn't have the bridging equipment until later in the campaign to cross the muse. I think that's essentially because they their objective was... Um, Sedan, which is over here, 
but I guess they found that's a long way to go. And so perhaps they thought, OK, limited objectives, let's nip across. And they brought in and they started an attack on this front as well. Um, so you see, you would have four turns and maybe you've built up some sorts to nip across. Maybe you, you could nip across, get this fellow. But we this advance is OK. We're on the fourth game turn. And obviously after the first turn, things slow down a lot. But you can see we're like maybe a sixth of the way to Sedan. It's going to be quite a tall order. But what you would have to do is destroy enough German units. They only get 10 replacements over the whole game. That um, we managed to find a gap in their line that they, they are not able to successfully plug and manage to get through it. Now that's a bit of a tall order because you can see the German has reinforcements in the east there. Reinforcements on the west here coming in, some on the north. And that's sort of the first cycle. And then the second cycle, their reinforcements will be coming on along those sides as well. So the Germans are always getting units to sort of plug lines. So we'll see if it's possible, if, if I'm able to do it as the Americans. But otherwise, it's going to be slow going. And you might just be taking that, that and that hex for a minor tactical victory. Uh, we shall see. So... Um, where were we? We were looking down here. Okay. Um, so, yes, just moving out the sense of, okay, they're going to attack here. And we've got some artillery support. Then keeping a front line, because if you don't, like I said, the German can move through it and potentially um, take out artillery. These are far enough away at the moment, but that's not a problem. These, I said, pointing at these fellows. Okay. Um, I'm just looking to see if I want to cycle fellow out. Uh, and if I have, so if you take it for whole division, now, that's four units. They can stack to a hex. The Germans can stack three a hex. Um, so two a hex. So that. Would, if I took out divisions, that's two hexes in the front line. I'd need to fill with other regiments, at least two hexes, maybe even four. I think they're not bashed up enough yet to make it a big problem. This one, that's the 35th. Need a bit of a light because the you need to know, you need to see which regiment, and it's very small. Um, Notation. If I can show you here, there's the camera. So you can see the division is marked on the side there, and then the regiment is 140th. So that's 35th division. And if I want to take all of them off, I need to find all four regiments. Often they're stacked to a hex, but not always. Um, so we got the 35th there, and under the gas here, we got the 3rd. So I could, that's with the 3rd as well, and that's a 3rd. So I might, but then I, I, I have to leave them there essentially or else cover that line, because I can't put someone into a gassed area hold the hole. So I think these are 35th. You've lost three steps from four steps. I think I'm going to, have to take them out. So I just remove them off, put them in the general headquarters box. And each regiment can receive at one step replacement per turn. So now I want to fill a gap. So we're going to move 28th. Now, because no zones are controlled, this is great. You know, you don't have to write, oh, okay. just move them across. Okay, so they're holding the line there. Um, now I've got two divisions from reserve there. And what I'm trying to do is break through here where there's a gap in the trenches. So up, up here, it's sort of solid trench lines all the way. Here we've got a bit of open space, we can come around up to here is actually 
the Hindenburg Line. Now that is extra, that's permanent fortification. So three steps um, left on the combat results table instead of two steps for um, regular field works. So I'd like to bust through here, but you can see the German guest. <laughs> I was going to do that uh, and uh, reinforce it with some machine guns groups. Um, and, and also I can't attack from there, so I could attack from here. And I think are we going to affect that? So moving the third back. You can only have one, you can't stack different divisions, so you can only stack two regiments to a hex as the Americans if it's from the same division. Let's so move the third back, and now we're sending the first division in there. Okay, we're going to cycle. The 91st out because he's taking a couple of step losses and bring in first there as well. So you have to be careful because, um, although you can just take them straight off to add replacements, when they come in as reinforcements, they have to move up. So you can see that's going to get more difficult. 10 movement points normally, one along a road normally one and clear etc um but it's going to get harder as the further up front we get so we want an attack here because that's also um has no trenches though it's heavily very well guarded um you're not supposed to look under stacks but obviously i can <laughs> uh, so that's the 79th, we'll move them there. Where's the rest of the 79th? I've got two here, I've lost the other two. Um, strange, these are 78, 78. Okay, so I've lost half a 79th, I must have moved it somewhere else. I can't see it, anyway, I won't worry about that now. We just move in. Oh yeah, and I had a few, um, three I think, four counters missing. I think that was my loss. I don't think it was a an error on the publisher's part. Um, so I just made up some replacements. Okay, so he's going to be attacking through there, and in. You have to have quite strong units to do that because you're going to incur a step. You might potentially the um, German might counterattack, which probably incur will, will definitely incur one step. Probably not more than that because they won't be, have such a powerful attack. Generally, their attacks, their defense strengths generally better than their attack strengths. So these ones here are six on attack, five on defense. So that could be two steps lost, and then they could. Put a gas marker on you which would be three steps lost so if you have less than three steps in a hex at any one point um there's a potential for a hole forming in the german turn and um they would be able to exploit that with um, a machine gun marker in their replacement in the german replacement segment so you have to be a bit careful um again now that's in wooded terrain, but still I want to attack that. I'll move them out, bring them in, because they're stronger. And I could, for example, have those two on there, but I'm going to go for the further hex. And it's quite nice that as as the American, as you take a, a, a trench hex, you get the benefit of the trench on any counterattacks. Which is nice, but what it does mean is that, say, for example, if you do take a an open ground hex like that, it also makes you more exposed, obviously, for a counterattacks because you've got no terrain to cover in in the German turn. Um, so we're going to be attacking here, here, and here. 
we would have liked to attack here before as well, but we've got the gas so we'll attack here. Um, and then here, can you see that? No, okay. So now this is a bit strange. There's like an elbow in the muse here. And so effectively any units which we attack here are just leading us up to a dead end until turn 13. So it's not so handy, although we might well want it by then. But the thought is really to sort of put and also um, put the front line to here, the American front line to here, resting on this elbow. Obviously, then we we might we want to clear these out, or else we'd have to you know that we'd have to have a whole load of units extending a front line around here. So this isn't really going anywhere. This is kind of like a little pocket, but we have to eliminate the pocket, unfortunately, which is going to cost us a placement. Um, fortunately, there's some weaker Austrian divisions, so we will definitely have an attack here, here, perhaps here. So move this up so we can attack across here. We've got a nice attack there. Move them up. And probably those two will attack that one. We have a weak uh, French unit there, which really is handy for holding the line, although and we're now coming up to the next turn will be the fifth game to which we can um, attack from this sector. Now you might find this odd that there's no defenders and that there's a yellow start line there but in fact this whole um, front you know even down here is defended by the French so there's there's French um, forces all the way along here they're not represented in the game because they didn't take as much part in the attack these blue ones did some artillery and a few um, about four regiments I think um, so the Americans are kicking off from the French line it wasn't an American held line they just brought their horses up to kick off from it so the um, German player can never go past the front line so you can uh, barring artillery barrages you can always have units behind the front line they're safe and you don't have to hold it with on map represented units but like I say we do consider we do want to make an attack up here to gain gain this um, victory point hex here and then hopefully that one there so we need some preparation for that so in preparation for that I'm going to one two three four five six seven eight nine move that French unit over there and in game turn five we will get more or less three divisions of reinforcements on the allied side and i guess i would use those to start that attack there um with some artillery support so i don't really want to fire all of these maybe take the french ones off over there okay so that is the movement turn so now we go to the combat turn and let's start in reverse order where we went. You can see that was very quick and painless. Um, now, so yes, I, so we got these two, which is actually a whole division, is going to attack this hex. So he's defending on a six, and we have two twelves, a ten, and the eleven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to one. Now the, the combat results table goes from 1 to 3 to 8 to 1. If you go above 8 to 1, like say it's 9 to 1 odds, you can still factor that into the, the shifts because this fellow is in a... Just checking that you can see that. This fellow is in a field fortification, so that's a two left shift. And so I said 71, so we go down to the 6 to 1. Now, like I said, we're definitely going to take a loss unless I can assign a barrage. And the barrage, we have to assign it now, um, but it could potentially go in. It could take him out. Four, but is that the essential place? Also, I have to check the range, like 1, 2, 3, 4, this fellow's only got four hex range, this one 12, this one four, um, 
one, two, three, four. So this one's going to have to move us because he's out of range. This fellow can help us. And these two, which they only have two strength, he's got four, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have to sort of check the columns. You get one to three column, four to six, seven to eight. So you want to be, say, not in the six column, but in the seven to eight column, which, so I'm going to fire this one this one and this one which brings us up from the six to the eight column which is going to go down um, one column for the artillery not two um so we're on the four to six columns so we have a, uh, a four out of six chance of some effect and i rolled a three which is a one step loss so he So he takes a step loss. So now we're going in against five factors. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now it's eight to one. Uh, goes down to six to one. I roll. I got a three, and that is one step loss to the attacker and two to the defender. So I didn't really need that barrage, but you know it made my odds better. Uh, and now I put him. I, I'm over here. This game is a because of the the way the divisions are marked and the amount of units. Like you know, every division has every unit essentially has two on the American side, two um, steps and so forth. Um, it's it's quite a, a, a pain. It took me an hour or an hour and a half last night to sort and set up, reset up. Um, all of the counters so I got and as I take them off now to help that for the next time I play it because it is a good game I know I'll play it again in the future um, I've, bagged, I've arranged bags of sectors for putting the losses in um, okay so uh, so we get an advance after combat like that okay so the next attack I'm not going to Four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to support it with this artillery. No, there's no point because that would step loss. Um, would step to the left beyond the table, which would be a no effect. So we're not going to be able to use that artillery. Would only be helpful at, um within the clear on its own. Okay. And this one's too far away, so this is going to go in without artillery. The question is, do I join those together? We've got two versus twenty-two, so that's even with two, so that what you know that's what eleven to one. So that get down two makes it nine to one. That's so that's still at the top of the table. So yeah, that's going on its own. I roll a. Three, and that's one loss to me, two to them. It potentially could be one on a six, that, that the highest, that would have been one loss to me and four to them. But you can see that's a weak unit. I should probably, well, the German thought, not too worried about that elbow there. It's just a delaying action. Okay, but that is a necessary step loss. For the attacker. Now I don't want to go down to one step because that's dangerous so I have to take this three step. I have to look for 37th division. And find the two step counter. Place it there. Now I'll, I'll take you quickly over here to show you what I did. Um, these are the uh, American uh, one and two step counters and you, uh, you can see I, I these are all the divisions I think there's how many is it some like 20 divisions they have you don't get this sheet like second division second marine division second division third division first division etc um you don't get that. You have to. I had the first game. I had it just set up on the table without the markings, so it was a bit of a pain. Which where's the thirty seventh division again? So here it's e easier, and then even easier still. What I did is 
you see you've got a division and um, okay take this one 12 12 11 and 9 so they have different factors or that's all the second step but they have different factors so you can't just take any one um regiment from that division and swap it with any one of the, the, the second step things you have to find the appropriate one and other than reading the actual regiment number that tiny number there on the side you can't you can't do that so um i thought oh first thought i thought was oh i don't really care um the difference is sort of two or maximum three factors um in each one i'll just swap whichever one is and it's not going to make a huge effect on the game on the other hand i thought okay let's, let's have a bit more fidelity to the actuality and so i just noticed noted down here this is the there's two on four, 14 factors that go down to 12 factors on the second step. And so at a glance, I can say, okay, in this one, there's 30, three of the same. There's one which is different. Some like here, they're all the same. So it doesn't matter which one replaces which. So I'm not checking um, the actual regiment number and just checking the factors, which is the only game effective point. So... You know, this is all just to give you an idea of this game, what it's about, would you be interested in it, etc, etc. So, we had a success attack here, now we've got another one coming in here. So this is um, 3 against 24, so what's that? That's 8 to 1, but against Woods it's 1 left, so we go to the 7 to 1 column. And I roll a four, and that's a one versus two. That's great. So there's two step losses there. So we'll remove that whole one. But there's, unfortunately, there's one step left there. Now, if I'd had artillery in range, then we might have caused step loss and been able to take that whole hex. But unfortunately, it didn't have it enough artillery within range to affect that. Oh, hang on. I could have done this one. Shucks. Too late now. And I could have brought in, I could have used some of the French, but I want to move them over. So that's the kind of decisions you're making. So you can see we do have a hole in the German line now. So they will have to, to plug that in their turn. Okay, so where else did we want to attack? Now I think we're going to go for this one. So these two attacking here. So that's six versus one, two, three, four. Six and eight. So that's eight to one. That's two down. So on the six to one, I'm on a three. Do I use artillery? No, it's, no. That's one to one down. I should have got some artillery in there. So, oh well. So we mustn't forget to use this artillery unit now on this attack. He's got the range. So he's a six. Uh, he he's in the open, so that's just regular column. And I'm on a four. On a five, that would have been two step losses. On a four, it's just one. So we'll take that off the. Uh, well, no, we'll take it off the one underneath because that's only going to be a reduction of one in the German strength. Okay, so now we're at four, five, six, versus. 26 so that's four to one straight oh no he's in forest forests don't uh, defend uh, give no defense benefit against artillery but they do against infantry attack oh, yeah one thing you might notice there's no tanks left here the tanks you get four tank units they've all been used up essentially they just absorb a step loss they have two steps each no combat factors so you just stack them on any one uh, hex and as that combat goes in you, you, you can reduce the tank as a step loss um, if you wish instead of your infantry and that's essentially what they do and you have to use that the French ones quite quickly or else they get removed <laughs> so they're the first to go so anyway where were we I said six it was four to one wasn't it and I rolled a five I think I'd already rolled him I but now I've rolled again anyway it's the same I got one one step loss. Um, 
two step losses, so that's gone, and then one step loss, because the machine guns are only one step, one step loss. To the American. Okay, the machine gun units just cycle back in. Um, it doesn't matter how many are eliminated, um, they come in depending on the role in that replacement and reinforcement segment. So he's going to advance. Now, no, I can only advance one. If I advance those two, because combat is now, it's not, we don't have the hasty attacks. They're from the first turn and the final assault. If I move them both, there's a gap. So the German would de almost definitely move in there and then we would not be able to attack and be at half defence. So I, I need to do that. I need two regiments in a hex so that one can advance, the other can hold the previous ground against counter-attack, etc. So, that's that. Then we wanted to attack here, didn't we? Well, that artillery's fired. Oh, can you see where I am now? Yes. Uh, the artillery doesn't have the range. This one does actually, yeah, um, and this is clear terrain, so he might cause a loss on a 50% chance. No, okay. So the attack's going in. You have to commit the artillery and the attack before, so even if your artillery doesn't give you what you wanted, you still have the infantry still go in after that barrage. I guess it's a creeping barrage by now, isn't it? Or maybe even rolling. Okay, so we have... 26 versus 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, ouch. So on this column, and it's in the terrain, a clear terrain, so there's no adjustment. On the 2 to 1, 30% of the time, the attack is actually going to take two step losses, so this is not a good column. Oh, and I rolled a 2, so yes, we take two steps as the attacker, and the defender only takes one. So that was a bit of a misfire on my part. Well, that was really, I could have sort of fact guessed that in if I'd done my staff work, but instead I was like, no, the uppers are demanding attack on all fronts. We must satisfy them. Go in, boys. So, uh, okay, that's the artillery there, I can't reach. So this attack's just going to have to go and bear. So we've got 7 versus 26, so that's 3 to 1. Oh dear, I rolled a 1, 2, and 1 step loss to the defender. But like I said, it's great that you know you're always going to cause at least one loss either way, or both ways, let's say. Um, so you're always going to do something, no matter what damage you take. Unfortunately, in this case, the German obviously elects to take it off his machine gunner because chances are that's going to come back. Okay, so nothing there. No, do these. It's nasty if you've got trenches in a forested terrain. That gives you because you can have man-made and natural cumulative uh, terrain benefits. So that will give you four. Um, Shifts left. Do not do an attack on that. By all means, bombard with the artillery. Now, one thing you can do after all combat, if any artillery haven't fired in support of um, an assault, they can fire alone. So you could um, just pop off a one, possibly a two-step loss maximum, depending on the strength of your artillery barrage and the die roll. And you might have noticed that it's very quick, um, that you're not checking lots of modifiers. The only modifiers are column um, shifts, not, no modifiers to check for die rolls and stuff like that. So you can see it all happens nice and quickly. Um, so I'm not going to, nothing here, nothing here, but here, this fella, he doesn't have a trench. But he is for us, so that's two left shifts. So it's six versus so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how I count it up. Six plus eight, shift down two, so that's six to one column. Does the artillery go in? Yes. Because 
no, six to one on a f five out of six, we get two losses on the defender. So we're going to risk it on a one. No, yes, so he's completely gone. Shift, that fellow can shift in. Um, and that means we've got this artillery. One, two, three, four. We can move up one, I think. No, we'd have to fire them together to have any effect in the forest. So I think we're actually going to move them up and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this one has the range. That one can actually fire over here. Can you see that again? Yeah, that's a bit strange. So on the six I roll, which is two step losses, wonderful. So he's completely gone. Um, and that and now I move uh, so that's the end of that combat segment so now it's the artillery movement if they didn't fire so one two three four five six one two three four five can't, artillery can't stack with any other unit um, Two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Then this artillery, one, two, three, four, five, six. Have a minute. Okay, I don't think maybe you can't see that, but that's okay, just move the artillery. Okay, and that's the end of the American turn. Now we go to the German turn, they have movement and then combat. Don't forget they have um, three marriage um, markers, so that's just abstracting their artillery. They can just put them wherever they like. They don't have to worry about moving artillery units around, which is, you know, a nice, easy touch. And it perhaps simulates the great facility of the Germans. I don't know, but it just makes the game run quicker and smoother. And in fact, um, this game can be played solitaire. They has a little solitaire system for the German because you can see their job is really to, to block gaps and uh, uh, very occasionally make counterattacks. At the beginning of the game, they roll a die. They can get between one and six of these um, deliberate attacks, I think they're called DAs. And as long as you have a unit with six or more, or hex with six or more strength attack points, uh, attack factors um, you can do one of those attacks immediately at eight to one odds disregarding terrain and everything like that that's only per game so the german has three powerful counter attacks in this game up to six maximum um you see those that's just that crucial points are just another factor the german the Amer did i say american the german has those attacks so the american you know he, the German's got all these methods of stymieing his thrusts with the gas, um, throwing in machine gunners, uh, um, and then uh, those direct attacks on these concentrated barrages. I guess it is also helpful in the, in the sense that in a two-player game, it means that the American can't look across and say, oh, I can see you've got all your artillery massed here, therefore I'm going to attack here or something like that, you know, because they wouldn't, well, maybe they've been able to see it with a aerial reconnaissance. I don't know. Okay, so anyway, let's do it. So I'm just moving in reserves from the east, which you can't see, but essentially they can move on the roads. Um, they have uh, what's called operational movement, so it's double movement rate on the roads. The American can bring this in from turn five onwards because they had to sort out the muddy mess of the roads around here um so essentially i can bring in the uh, i need to block so yeah we've got a gap in the front line here so essentially they've got enough movement points to block those gaps and then i'll put another strong fellow there to hold the victory point hex so that's all the eastern reinforcements um, now there are some in the north over there, and I can't remember the 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 18, 19, 20. So that brings us to there between Newart and Belvoir. It's handy to remember that because they're always going to come in as fast as possible. Um, I like to think I'll just mark that as a mark for me. Okay. Uh, and then that's that's all the reinforcements for this turn. But the Germans do have some stacks here. One, two, three, to, which they had prepared the previous turn to plug gaps. So. Uh, where it was, we could stack three high, um, but I'm tending to, yeah, no, I put them in, maybe that's a good idea. We need three in here, don't we? One there. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, without zones of control. Six, seven, eight. Without zones of control, we don't have to worry too much. Now, the question is, shall I would bring back the front line? Um, these fellows, I think not. Because it, I don't know. Because I only get so many replacements anyway for the weaker units. I tend to, I, I have to withdraw a unit its replacement on. Um, I, I think it's, it's more beneficial to leave those as delayers and, and you know, s an attrition, creating attrition in the American line. Um, okay, now we've got a gap in the Argonne here. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so we bring one there, flip him up there. And I th can't go to operational movement if they're adjacent to a um, enemy unit. So I could perhaps go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't have enough movement to get across there. So seeing as there's a gap here, the Germans are going to have to bring their whole front line. That one can go there. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's done it. Okay. Uh, and now we decide, do we want to attack anywhere if and or barrage? Essentially, we're looking for a unit in the open where we can get a couple of uh, these ones are in the open I don't think we would must we wouldn't want to muster attack but we will go for the barrage we'll put all of it down that's nine on that one hex and we don't have to do it, but I'll just do it for the visual for you while I'm at it. And then we roll. And on a one, you can always get a fluff. Um, I rolled a four, which on this column is a two step loss. So that was beautiful. And we'll take one step on each of those. That's, and that's the German job done. So that's the end of the fourth game turn. How are we doing for time? That's nearly an hour. I think that's plenty long enough. And uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll continue playing the game. I've really enjoyed showing it to you. I'd like to show you more, but who wants to watch, you know, 10 hours of game play? Um, I'll come, but come back, I think, when something interesting is happening, something different that I haven't spoken about now. Uh, um, which shows particular um, uh, features of this particular game. So, over and out.